Hi everyone, thanks again for joining me on Backroads Tourist. I'm Jeff, and today I have 10 tips for you if you're planning on riding the White Pass and Yukon Route Railway in Skagway, Alaska. Let me just start by saying that if you're cruising to Alaska and looking for an excursion or something to do in Skagway, this train ride is the most popular option. My wife and I have cruised to Alaska twice, and both times we've chosen this ride. As you'll see, it's absolutely gorgeous, but there are a few things you should know before you climb aboard. And make sure you watch all the way through because I'm saving the biggest tip, the one you'll thank me for, until the very end. Tip number one, it's pricey. As of the summer of 2022, it's about $140 for an adult and $70 for a child. The trip lasts about two and a half hours. In 2022, due to health restrictions, the train does not stop in Canada. It's strictly a round-trip ride. Now, according to their website, they are planning on bringing back the train-bus combination tours in 2023, where you can take the train to Carcross, Canada, then board a tour bus to bring you back, or take the bus to Carcross and take the train back. We did this on our first Alaskan cruise in 2015, and to be honest, I wasn't too impressed with the bus part of the tour. It seemed very rushed and disorganized when we went. It's also more expensive. Tip number two, do not expect to see wildlife. Everyone hopes they'll see a bear or a moose from the train, but that's probably not gonna happen. Keep in mind that this is a full-size train chugging through the mountains, and most animals tend to avoid big, loud things. And that brings us to tip number three, bring binoculars. You're gonna be passing through some areas where you can see for miles and miles and miles. If you want a better chance at possibly seeing wildlife, bring binoculars with you and you might get a glimpse of them where they feel safe, which is far away from the train tracks. Tip number four, the train ride can be pretty noisy. We noticed this most on the return trip as we were coming down from the mountains. There's lots of brake noise. Take a listen. So if you're sensitive to loud noises or have children that are, you may want to consider bringing earplugs or noise-canceling headphones. Tip number five, and this is a big one, bring a camera. There's a reason why this is the most popular excursion in Skagway. The beauty is incredible. Hey, we're halfway through the tips, so I'd like to take just a moment to remind you to like this video and subscribe to the Backroads Tourist channel. I go to a lot of fun places and I really want to share them with you. It costs you absolutely nothing to subscribe. And make sure you click that notification bell to be the first to know when new videos are uploaded. I try to do that every Friday. Now, let's get back to my 10 tips for riding the White Pass and Yukon Route Railway in Skagway. Tip number six, be prepared for rain. 
On average, Skagway only has 85 sunny days per year and gets some kind of precipitation on average 162 days per year. In other words, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get some rain no matter what you decide to do in Skagway. You'll still see some incredible scenery, but it just may be a little wetter than you'd like. As you can see in this video, we lucked out and had some incredible weather. This was in mid-May, so you can still see plenty of snow on the ground. Skagway averages 262 inches of snow per year. Tip number seven, listen to the commentary during the trip. It's funny, it's informative, and it's enriching. It's going to give you a better appreciation for both the gold seekers who came to Skagway and the men who built this incredible railway. Now, I'm going to add another tip to this tip. Let's call this tip 7.2. To really get the most out of the experience, do a little research on the gold rush before you take the train ride. Tip number eight, if you're arriving in Skagway by cruise ship, don't worry about not being able to find the train. It's right at the end of the pier. And since it is so close, I would recommend using the restroom in your cabin before you board the train. The train does have restrooms, but let's face it, it's a restroom on a train. Plus, you won't want to miss any of the scenery. Tip number nine, you may want to bring a candy bar or some other snack with you on board. When we took our trip, they did have free bottled water, but no snacks. It's about a two and a half hour trip, and if you're coming off of a cruise ship where you're used to eating every two hours, it might be just a little too much to handle. Are you ready for tip number 10? It's a big one. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Here we go with the big tip, tip number 10. People are going to tell you that it doesn't matter which side of the train you sit on. Trust me, it matters. Not only do you want to be on the left side of the train as you're facing forward, but you're also going to want to make sure you choose a seat with a window that offers an unobstructed view. Some seats are situated so you have a window frame or partition messing up your view. So why do you want a window on the left? As you go up into the mountains, that's where you'll get the best views. The right side of the train will be looking at rock wall for a good part of the trip. Now just to be fair, when the train turns around and makes the return trip, you'll be on the unscenic side of the train, but here's the thing. When the trip starts, the guides are going to be pointing out special things to see. On the way back, they probably won't be doing that. At least, that was our experience. So there you have it, my top 10 tips for riding the White Pass and Yukon Route Railroad. 
Have you been on the trip? Did I miss anything? Leave your comments below if you have any other tips. I'm Jeff, thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you on the back roads.